Hello everyone, today we're going to be covering how to add Svelte and Tailwind into a new Rails 7 application. This is going to be based on a blog post, I'll have a link to it in the video description, that was released prior to the Rails 7 release. So the stuff in here is a little bit outdated, it still works I assume, uh, but instead of using basic uh, data components and grabbing it with a check to see if the component exists inside of the JavaScript and adding all the ES build stuff manually, we're going to go ahead and run the uh, CSS bundling and the JS bundling Rails gem, and then we're going to go from there. So to get started, we're going to go ahead and uh, bump up the font size, run a Rails new, I'll call it video, pass in a dash J for ES build and a dash C for Tailwind. Okay, let's go ahead and clear this, CD into video. We're then going to run a code dot. Okay, now that that's done, let's come in here and let's do a Rails G controller, pages home, Rails G stimulus, let's call it the Svelte controller. And then we should be good to go there. Next, let's come over to our gem file because I'm running Ruby 3.2 and Foreman isn't updated to run with 3.2 yet and I'm too lazy to change back to 3.1. I have to add in the gem for the Foreman stuff and grab it from the main branch of GitHub. Not recommended, uh, but it is a stable branch right now. Uh, so this build works for me. I can then go ahead and run a bundle command. So if you're in the same boat as me and you run into that annoying error when you try to run your bin slash dev, that's how you can fix it. Next, we want to come down here into the tailwind.conf. We do have to do some manually configure manual configuring here. First thing is at the bottom, we want to add a uh, dot slash app slash JavaScript slash blah, 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 slash uh, asterisk dot svelte. That allows us to, uh, oops, this needs to be one slash. That allows us to uh, compile the svelte stuff or grab the svelte uh, files and add tailwind into them. So that's pretty cool. Next, we have to right click new file. We want to call this the esbuild.config.js. If you're familiar with running esbuild through the bin slash dev stuff, if you come into your package.json, you have this really long build file or this build uh, command. We're going to throw that into a esbuild config file, which is going to look like this, where we grab the watch from the process args includes. We then require esbuild, we call dot build, we pass in the entry points, we pass in bundle, the out file, plugins, log level, and watch. Uh, and this uh, this right here requires us to run the uh, require esbuild dot svelte, or dash svelte, which means we do need to in, uh, do a yarn add, because we're using esbuild. We need to do a yarn add for uh, svelte and for esbuild dash svelte. So that should go ahead and add both of those. And now that we're done with that, we should be good to run a bin slash dev, hopefully. And uh, hopefully this works. We can come over to localhost port 3000 and it'll take us to the root of our application. Now let's come over to, uh, let me go ahead and save this actually. Uh, we do need to stop this again and run the command one more time uh, because uh, we forgot to do this too. So in our package.json, we want to replace this really long build command with a shorter one that just calls build uh, or it, it's called build and then it calls node and then on the dot slash esbuild config.js. So it just runs the node command against this esbuild to run the esbuild stuff. So we can save that Come over here, stop the server, hit the up arrow, run the bin slash dev command again. That will work for us. Next, let's come over to our config and our routes.rb. Inside of our routes, all we really wanna do is just change the application to be the root of the application. We can then come up to our app, our views, our pages, and our home page. And in our home page, we want to create a basic stimulus controller hookup, which is just a div that has a data dash controller equal to Svelte. Or in our case, we have a content tag where we pass in a div with nothing inside of it with some data that has the controller bound to be the Svelte controller, which of course is the JavaScript controllers Svelte controller that we created earlier. And then in here, what we can do is just do a console log to say, hello, stimulus, and then uh, log out the element we're attached to, which is that data dash controller. So hopefully you see how this hookup works. Next, let's go ahead and let's add Svelte to this. Now you've seen all of that setup. You would think this would be the hard part, but it turns out this is actually the very easy part. Uh, all we really want to do in here is just come down here say const app equals new hello world is what we're going to call our first component. We'll also create a counter component after this. So you can see a little bit of like state manipulation or whatever. Uh, I don't use Svelte, full disclaimer. I have no idea what I'm doing. This is pretty much entirely AI generated at this point. I just type in a comment and hope that GitHub Copilot gives me what I want. And it actually ended up working, which I thought was pretty funny. So here, if we refresh, we'll see hello world is not defined because we haven't created this component yet. So 
let's exit out of here, come over to our JavaScript, right click new folder, call it Svelte. And in here we'll put in our component, right click new file, call it the uh, hello world.svelte. And inside of the hello world.svelte, what we wanna do is we want to grab a script where we import on mount from Svelte, export let target, and then on mount, we just check if target is undefined, we set it equal to world, uh, otherwise we're good to go. And actually what we'll do in here, we'll change this from world to it was undefined, yo, something like that. Uh, and then down here, we create an H1 where we say hello target. And because we're passing this in from our Svelte controller, where we have the target props, where we pass in the world, this should hopefully give us a uh, hello world. We come up here, it is upset about something because we have to import the hello world. And if we come over to our uh, Svelte controller here, we can import hello world from our dot dot slash Svelte because we're in the controllers directory. We have to go one up to JavaScript and then we can go into Svelte and then we can go into hello world. Go ahead and save that, come over here, refresh, and we can see hello, it was undefined, yo which is telling us that we're probably not passing in our props correctly somehow, uh, because I think it thinks it's supposed to be named target maybe. Let's go ahead and save that. Come over here, there we go, hello world. See, I know a little bit, I've learned from, from Copilot, um, <laughs> but okay, this is pretty neat. Uh, let's try to create a counter app. So to do that, we're gonna comment out the hello world component. We're gonna come down here, create a new component. This one's gonna be called app and it's just gonna take in a target of this dot element. We don't pass in any arguments here. Although we could probably pass in like a default uh, counter value if we wanted to. Next, let's import app from, and then we'll just put this in the same location, which is gonna be dot dot slash svelte slash app dot svelte. And we can come over here, oops, we can come over here, right click on our svelte folder, new file, call this app dot svelte. Again, kind of made this up as I went along. What we do here is we say, let's create a script. We import the counter from dot slash counter uh, for Svelte. And then we do a whole bunch of uh, super cool fancy Tailwind stuff, which I also don't know how to use. So this is kind of a learning experience for me. Basically, we give it some classes where we uh, sort of give the layout of what we want this to look like. Uh, it's a whole bunch of pretty low level stuff. You can almost think of uh, Tailwind classes as just inline styling, uh, but because they're in classes, people think that that doesn't make it sloppy code. Okay, so now that we have this, we need to go create this counter. So let's go over here on Svelte, right click new file, call it counter.svelte. That was a joke, by the way, if you're Tailwind Dev, uh, you can stop writing the angry comment now. Uh, we'll come in here, we'll do a script for the uh, let count equal zero. Again, you could initialize this to some value, I'm sure. And then we wanna create another set of divs, which is gonna be for our uh, f uh, alignment, I guess. We then create a H1 where uh, it is also gonna be centered because of the uh, stuff over here. And we just say this is for the counter. Inside of here, we wanna create a button. And uh, this is where I started actually learning Svelte. After we create the button, we want to give it an on click where uh, when we click it, we just increment this counter by one. Uh, we can then also give this a class which works just like every other component. And then we can go ahead and close this button. Then we can give this some text which says uh, clicked uh, count and then times. Uh, and then you can even do like, uh, yeah, if count is equal to one, make it uh, nothing. If it's equal to anything other than one, then it should be an S. We can put an exclamation mark there, sure, why not? And we can exit out here, come over here and refresh our page. And we'll see that we uh, can click this and that increments. Um, but of course, this is looking a little bit weird. Let's maybe do this instead. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. But we don't have our Tailwind styling appearing on our screen. So why is that? Okay, so to fix this, we have to come over to our Tailwind conf and we have to make sure this is JavaScript slash asterisk asterisk slash asterisk dot svelte. I missed one of the slashes. Let's come over here, refresh. We now have the Svelte app, which works as expected. Let's come into our homepage, get rid of the uh, first and second line worth of uh, HTML elements. And now we have a working Svelte app where we can click the button and get the happy chemicals. Okay, hopefully this was helpful. I tried to go through this as quickly as possible to cover everything that I need to. Uh, and yeah, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully I will see you in the next video.